Hey everyone, it's Joy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fun unboxing video, three cards plus three quick bonus cards using brand new products from scrapbook.com. They sent me a bunch of fun stuff to play with and I'm excited to share these things with you. There's a couple things in here that are a little unexpected at this time of the year, but super fun to play with. So here's what came in my box. And if you guys order anything, you guys are gonna get these little SBC Fest cards. And I am an instructor this year. It's March 10th and 11th. So you guys will definitely wanna check that out. It's free to you guys. So I got this great adhesive roller. I'm really loving using it. I've been using it for quite a while now. This holographic mirror paper, there's golds and silvers, but different finishes, different patterns on it, super fun. Then I used the Sunny Lane patterned paper, and this just really reminded me of like quilting. I am not a quilter, I am not a sewer, but when I saw this patterned paper, a lot of it reminded me of that. So that's kind of what some of these cards are gonna look like to me anyways. Then we have the Happy Birthday dies, and I'm in love with these dies, I can't wait to show you. Then the Sunburst die, then you have the Trick or Treat die. Isn't that a cute little witch? And the Haunted House die. So this is what I was talking about a little different this time of the year, but I had so much fun making it. So I started with a piece of uh, yellow, uh, the Warms Smooth Cardstock from scrapbook.com. And then here are the pattern papers that I came out now that I used from the Sunny Lane patterned paper. They are double-sided, so I didn't need to use all of them if there was the same pattern on both sides because when you die cut all of them using this sunburst die, you're gonna have a ton of paper left over. So that's what I did off camera. I want to adhere this yellow sunburst to a piece of white Nina cardstock. And then we can fill in the open areas with all of that fun patterned paper on the background. So I'm using some liquid glue to put that in place. I just needed to trim a little bit of the white cardstock off. It was a little bit bigger than my die. That was my trimming. But now I'm going to use some strip, excuse me, some adhesive strips. Oh my goodness. And I'm in love with these. I just adhered them down, trimmed off the excess and worked my way around. Then off camera, I did lay out my pattern of the papers that I wanted to use on this background and in what order and where I wanted them to be. So I have them already laid out and I'm just gonna start working my way around the card by peeling off the release paper and using my reverse tweezers to line this up in place. For some reason I thought I had the wrong size there, but I didn't. But as you can see, there's a ton of these pieces left over. I did not use those pieces for my extra cards. I did use the piece, the solid piece that's cut from the sunburst. So the yellow piece that's on here, I used that for my little extra cards. I want that center piece popped up as well. So I'm adding more of that, of those foam adhesive strips. And then I can just put that in place. And now we have some dimension on this card. Here are my extras that I wanted to show you. The colored card stocks are from the Warms Smooth cardstock. That is not a new product. That is uh, something that they've already had. Then I die cut my happy birthday dies and I'll show those to you in just a second. One is an outline piece, which here I'm adding the glue behind. And then you have another piece that's solid. So most of these are die cut from the holographic mirror paper. And like I said, there's different looks to it. So this, I have a solid gold and like a star uh, gold starry look. This one was from the Warms Smooth cardstock. I thought this pop of pink and orange against this green background would be absolutely gorgeous. Then I have, let me get that in place. Then I am doing one that has gold and white cardstock, but here are those dies. So here's the gold and white. Here's the silver. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so, so pretty. Let's adhere those on top of our card panels. I just want to adhere them across the popped up center. All of those card panels have the centers popped up. And... The other part is just adhered directly to the background, but I thought this was a quick way to make a bunch of quick birthday cards. 
And I'm not one to use silver mirror cardstock, but I love that it had all that fun pattern on it. So I definitely use that. Look at how pretty that is. Then we have the solid cardstock, colored cardstock. Then we have our gold. And then we have our white and gold. Okay, let's go on to our next card. This is the Haunted House die, and it is so cute. I did all of the die cutting off camera, of course, to save some time. This is the solid back piece to the haunted house, and I am uh, ink blending that with Twisted Citron because I want it to have a fun, eerie green glow because you're going to see some open windows on this. So let's get to our background, and then we can put that cute house together. I'm using Tim Holtz Moon Mask, placing that in the center up at the top. This is the medium moon out of that stenciling set. And I want a spooky, eerie orange background. So I am using a crackling campfire, carved pumpkin, and scattered straw. So I'm starting with the crackling campfire. I'm leaving the bottom part open because I want to come back in with my black soot and add that on the at the bottom because that's going to give it a nice, good creep factor. This carved pumpkin is next. And then finally, the scattered straw. I liked that it wasn't like this super bright yellow, but a little bit muted, so it felt a little creepier to me. I am using foam blender tools. These are domed foam from scrapbook.com, and I really like these. I, I like how they feel when they blend. They just kind of go across the paper super, super smooth. Here's that black soot, and look at how creepy that looks now that I'm adding that at the bottom. I am using the blender tool for the crackling campfire to blend that black soot in just a little bit, and then I decided I'm going to add a little bit to the top as well. Then I can use the blender tool for the scattered straw and blend that out, but look at how creepy that looks. Okay, let's make this moon. I'm gonna clean up my work surface. I am using the silicone mat from scrapbook.com and it really is easy to clean. As you can see, it can stain though with some of like the pink or red inks, but it still works just fine. Now I am using Wild Honey and I'm gently going over the background to give it some color and I'm being lighter handed. So when I bring in the second part of that moon mask, I can go a little bit heavier handed to add the details to it and look at how great that looks. I'm going to go over it just a little bit more to soften that, but I am loving this background. Okay, let's glue our house together. So this piece is a die cut from Lawn Fawn's Storm Cloud cardstock. So I want a nice gray. We're adhering it to that inked up background. So you can see we have our nice openings for our windows and our doors. Then you have this, this outline piece that I have die cut from Lawn Fawn's Licorice cardstock. And this is going to go over the background, or excuse me, over the top. This is adding some more detail. Look at how great that looks. Then you have all of these window frames that we can put in place. Those were also die cut from licorice cardstock. There is a weather vane, bats, and some fence that are also all die cut from the licorice cardstock. I'm using my reverse tweezers and a little bit of liquid glue to put all of these windows in place, but this adds all the character around those little haunted windows and isn't it fun that it has that green glow and when we add this to the background it is so stunning so let's finish putting these i have a few more to put in place i just tapped off if i get too much glue on the background i tap it off with my finger just because i don't want a big blob of glue coming out even though sometimes that does happen especially on these smaller images but if you get too much just tap your finger on it and it'll take that excess glue off this is the last window here. And isn't that so cute? Let's lay this over the background. I do want this popped up, so I'm using those foam adhesive strips from scrapbook.com. I do have everything listed and linked for you guys below in the description. Everything that I'm using here is from scrapbook.com. Now I'm gonna add this weather vane. I did not put any foam tape behind it because it was too thin and I was not even about to try that. But I am having it on the front of the peak of that house and it's, it's lightweight so it's just gonna kinda float there. I die cut three bats. 
I die cut multiple fences. There's two little fence dies and I die cut multiple. And when you adhere them together the way I am, I'm not sure if you can see it well on the camera because it's kind of black on black, but they're a little bit wonky. So it gives you that good um, spook factor because the fence isn't all that neat. It looks old and rickety. I think it's so fun. I've never made a Halloween card in February, but it's a lot of fun. Like this is, I, I was not expecting this when I, when I opened up my package from scrapbook.com, but I'm glad because this was a lot of fun to make. So I'm going to finish gluing these. I'm letting the little extended pieces off the side of the fence overlap the fence next to it. And then I can trim that excess off. And we're getting this cute little scene together. Now we have our bats. I wanna leave room at the top for the sentiment. I am using the trick or treat sentiment from the trick or treat die that has that cute little witch. I do want some foam tape behind one of these bats. It's gonna look like it is coming out of the chimney. And then the other two bats, one's gonna be partly on the moon, partly not, and then the other one will be lower. And then we can add the sentiments. I did not use the shadow part. I just used the words themselves. And behind tree or after the end of treat, there is an exclamation. I did leave it off on this one, but I do add it to the next card. So a little bit of liquid glue. I did not stack these like I normally do. I wanted these flat against the background because I wanted the house to be the thing that's popped out the most, not the sentiment, which I know is weird for me because I always have dimension behind my sentiments, but it just felt right doing it this way. And then I'll add that to a white A2 sized card base and we can take a look at this really quick. Look at how great that is. I love this little house. Okay, let's do our final card. I have die cut the broom and the witch's hat from the uh, trick or treat die set. I am not going to put that whole little witch together. I think she's really cute. But as soon as I saw it, I instantly knew what I wanted to make. It's a super simple card, but a lot of fun. I used black soot on the witch's broomstick. I did scattered straw, and I'm sorry that, that I skipped that footage for some reason, on the broom sweepy parts, and then black soot on the witch's hat. For the background, I am using the same as the other background, but I'm not blending in black soot. So I am using crackling campfire, carved pumpkin, and scattered straw. I did trim this piece down about a half an inch on all sides. So it's quite a bit smaller than an A2 sized. I am going to scatter or do splatters with black soot on the background. And then we can start getting this card together. I am die cutting from licorice cardstock, the trick or treat. I am adding it to the white shadow. I thought a pop of white on this would be fun because I am gonna have quite a big white frame around it from the white A2 size card base. The dot to the eye and the dot at the bottom of the um, exclamation point are so tiny, you guys. <laughs> I'm surprised I did not lose them. I tried to keep them in the cardstock and then I was trying to push it through, but because it's so small, it just wanted to stick to my tweezers and not stick to the glue. It was really kind of funny, but they are super tiny. Then I can adhere that or to the background and we have our cute little sentiment. I am adding some glue to the end of the broomstick and adding the end of the, the sweepy part of the broom, whatever the heck that is called. I did add a foam tape behind the broom and the witch's hat. I'm centering those in the background. The stick part of the broom is just gonna float there. It does not have foam tape because it is way too skinny. And then liquid glue behind my sentiments. These will not have foam tape as well. But this is just a super simple card. I love, 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 love that it is just this little witch's hat and broom. I just think it's super, super fun. Once I get this in place and we can put this card together, I did cut a black mat that is just 
I mean a hair bigger than the inked up panel just to add a little bit of something and then I can adhere that to my white A2 size card base. And this card is done. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I hope that you enjoyed this project and I hope that you feel inspired. Have a wonderful day and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!